whilst plastic bags will take an estimated 500 to perhaps even a thousand years to decompose. 50 million tons of plastic are produced globally. In 2016, there was an amendment to the We are now working with the education of the system, and people are still littering their waste on streets. The system will not be sustainable. So how can we actually... My name is Richmond Kennedy Kwaku. Um, you can also call me Legacy, it's part of my name. I'm a trained merchant navy officer by profession. Um, I work on ships, on cargo ships, bulk carriers, um, basically big ships moving cargo from port to port. Uh, but at the moment, I'm on land, so I am running an NGO, Plastic Punch. We started Plastic Punch in um, January 2018. Uh, so Plastic Punch was started by a multicultural group of seven uh, from different nationalities. So we, we are from France, from Spain, and of course Ghana. Uh, we started when we went for a tattoo monitoring session. So we are a set of professionals in different fields, just concerned about the environment. So we went for a tattoo monitoring session in Ningo Pram Pram. And out of the six turtles we saw on this night, five of them were dead. I mean, we, we could not scientifically diagnose what was the cause of death of these turtles. But then when you look at the nature of the beach and some of these turtles entangled in plastics, dead and lying on the beach, we realized that there was this link. And considering how turtles are very important to the ocean ecosystem, we felt, it, um, we, felt we should take action We clean these beaches because um, they are turtle nesting beaches. Um, it is very important to let the community come in contact with the problem on the beach. So, for example, this beach, Ningo Pram Pram, um, the people don't feed on the turtles, not like other communities where they poach the turtles. So then it is very necessary that these people are not poaching the turtles, but then they find the turtles dying on their beach. And then looking at the nature of this beach and looking at all these plastics and trash we collected yesterday, you could see that, of course, if a turtle should come here to nest, it's going to be a big problem. So two things, to get a beach clean for the turtles for the nest season, and then the other thing will be for the community to be in contact with the problem and also be able to reduce their plastic blueprints by participating in activities like this. This is, this is why we find it necessary to come here. I mean, it is very disappointing. The last time we were cleaning, we found some petals under the trash. That is to show you that there is life, but then there's death everywhere, and that we can get this extinct species back to, to, yes, to more productivity in the sense of things. But at least we've done our best, and we'll keep doing our best, and hopefully one day people will dump less stuff, and and then we don't have any beach cleanups anymore because everywhere will be clean. It's difficult to work with uh, the authorities sometimes. Um, they are making arrangements for transportation, etc., uh, with the municipal assembly, the district assembly, whatever, the waste management companies. Uh, there are this laws of zoning and jurisdiction, and yes, they are kind of taking care of these laws, but then it, it is a problem because you are not able to work with more than one waste management company. You just need to work with what is in the district. This will be a problem. The other problem obviously will be finance, but yeah, I mean, we are keeping our head uh, above water, so I think that is okay for now.
I've really been concerned about the plastic um, topic in a while. Um, I really got concerned about it in 2012 um, when I started my thesis on, on the topic. And then I realized how uh, it was affecting marine ecosystem. So Richmond was very interested in plastics. And for me, uh, when he came with a project about plastics, I was uh, interested because having been at sea, I know the, the dangers of plastic. Plastics are in different forms and different materials. The one we see ashore here is not just what it is, but on the ocean, we see plastics in various forms. And most of the time, the cargo or cargo ships work with plastic materials, mostly like the ropes, and, you know, plastic uh, clothes, you know, for separation of cargo and all that. And from my experience, I know that the oceans are the greatest dumping ground because after discharging the cargo, where do you take the rest of the refuse to? We dump to our seas. So plastic punch, our aim is to raise awareness on the dangers of plastics for the environment, for humans and for marine life. So also in raising awareness, in awareness creation, we, we use different strategies because we want to communicate the problem in different forms. The most common one will be the beach cleanups. So we, we hold um, regular beach cleanups on turtle monitoring beaches or turtle nesting beaches, um, beaches where turtles come to nest. Um, this is what we do. Um, one of the awareness strategies. Um, the other awareness strategies will be for these beach cleanups, we couple it with workshops and not even only at the beach cleanups, even in the schools. So when we say plastic, we say plastic punch. Uh, we are an NGO. Uh, we're raising awareness on the dangers of plastics and for the environment, for marine life, and for human health generally, and coming up with sustainable waste management solutions. Our work is basically education. We go to the schools, we go to the churches, uh, we let the people aware of some of these things that were said yesterday. We have workshops, um, like gardening workshops, upcycling workshops, reusable and repurposing workshops, so that people could find value for, for, for these plastics or try to reuse them in different creative ways. Um, so these are some of the awareness strategies. We also have different awareness strategies through the media um, this concept we call edutainment. That's a combination of entertainment and education at the same time. So with this, we have the Plastic Punch drama, which we have translated into uh, the Plastic Punch series, um, so that people could see this on TV, on the screens. And basically, what this series tries to do is it's stating the norms or the unfortunate norms in the Ghanaian society at the moment. People throwing things out of torture, and it's trying to propose best um, waste management practices in trying to safeguard the environment. Chaskele is a concept that I evolved with my crew. The team I selected from the community I'm working with. So what we are trying to do is to look at the issues in the community. And also we had a workshop on the sustainable development goals. So we decided to work on goals three, six, and 15. And luckily these things are interwoven. And the big thing they look at is sanitation, hygiene, and health. So that is what we came up with, pushing the concept and all. So it is through the process when we're betting things and other things that I got in touch with Legacy because of the plastic punch advocacy. So I, so I realized that it's in line with our work. So I shared the idea with him and he was very okay with it. So my thing is that we are an advocate for environment and all we are looking out is to use the performing arts to push it. So as Plastic Punch also is an advocate and they have so many forms, we feel that collaborating with them to push this agenda will be right.
So with, with our beach cleanups, we do not want to be in the business of shifting or moving trash from the beach to the landfill. We don't want to be in, in this, in this uh, business at all. But what we realize is that we find 70% of plastics at every beach cleanup. So what we do is we try to create a circular economy uh, model around this, this, this plastics that we find on the beach. You know, people are ready to, to collect if there's a good mechanism in place. And this is what we have to try to build. This would have otherwise ended up on the beaches or in the gutters or somewhere. Nelplast recycle all kinds of plastics except PVC into building materials like the paving block, interlocking blocks that doesn't use cement in building. Legacy, it's some, uh, it's a guy I know for long. He normally collects the plastic from the beaches and other places and bring it to me. It's very great working with him because I can get the plastic that I need for my work also. Sometimes he do take cars, sometimes he do take bricks. I support him because it will send a signal on how plastic is important, how it's best not, not to just throw it away, but to keep it and benefit from it at the other end. Set in a fifty no, or it's different. I mean, different. Set so yeah, break near three CD, and not two CD. Okay, okay, okay. So you just add eleven to, to, the, to, to the sixty. So we we'll get around yeah, seventy one. Seventy two. Okay, seventy two. So seventy two divided by one point two. Why are you dividing again? I'll, 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 so 60 bricks. 60 bricks, yeah. It was 50 bricks. By trying to encourage the principles of reuse and this circular economy, we call for a free market, or before we call for donation, to be able to raise funds also at the same time, and also people trying to find nice things for cheap price in the sense of things. Um, so then people bring nice things, people come to buy these things, and whatever we make, we. Um, take it to promote our project or to support the project. Whatever things are not sold, we give them to charity. And this is why we find um, the flea market concept as a nice one because then we are able to go beyond our, our margin or our missions of just plastic punching to extending to help other charities or people who might need these items that um, we get that nobody may, may want. These things extend from toys to books to clothes to a lot of different things, jewelry, accessories. And I think all the donations we have made so far, the people receiving them were very happy. So it's a nice activity and we make some money also to pro pro promote our projects. Dada Wahoo. Oh. Tamanana Nyanushan. Safene. Auntie. Dada Makino. Ibesha. Okay. Atu. <laughs> Shey why? Yes again, Dada. Yes again. Eh, yes again. Yo, me dog be no agree ha. Play the view. Go me just say, you must say go more. Man of over some long bar about Simon Obeya. Kaka, as time goes on, na, mo ko ba niya ka o ko konfi ayo. Even on the shores of Accra alone, Mopona plastic punch toa, new door wana, a new nanto. Rabba tetel small, a new o prevent now from the sea. Kaka a plastic seal no kwe a woo now. If they are being hatched at the shore, sir, or we choke now kwa, o kuna. Yama van ya buddy, this is the user, sir. Ah, a ji jomni. Rabba a domania income doraka o new. Richmond. Of course, it's a brother from another, another mother. We grew up in this area, in this hood, neighborhood together since childhood. Yeah, so he has been a best of friend. You know, when we are together and maybe someone drops maybe a plastic or maybe a lettuce, rubber or something, he's like, no, come on, don't do that. It's bad manners. So he should pick it up. And he'll be like, okay, then he'll pick it up. And he, he's fond of that. Likes, he likes picking plastics 
from the floor, ground, put it in the dustbin, and oh, I'm very happy. I'm very happy, and I'm very happy is what he's doing. I'm very happy for him, and I feel very good because he's my brother. So I always want the best for him. But this thing, somebody step, step on it, mm -hmm. or it's strong. Because it doesn't look so strong, though. Mm. Did they have any casualties in this regard? Yes. Yes. When the, the girls' dormitory, yeah. the toilet over there were defected, the toilet, the feces was overflowing into the room, into girls' dormitory. Mm. So they have to tiptoe before they shit. So oh. one squats on the seat, and the seat got broken and then cut it. So secretly, they send a the child to What Legacy is doing, to me, is very, very important. Because collecting these plastics, the toxic waste from the plastic that is causing aquatic uh, death is reduced. And then this year, when we had flood, no water entered into anybody's room. And nobody complained about flooding too. Because the system is now clear. Plastic punch room may not know all the sources of these plastics. Uh -huh. But if you engage community participation, they will now bring it from all the obscure corners. And then plastic will be out from our midst. When I'm not punching plastics, I'm concentrating it on my media business. Yeah, I spend time with my wife. Uh, we punch plastics together. Yeah, Legacy is my partner or my chéri, how we call each other. <laughs> So yeah, we have been together since, I don't know, two and a half years or something like this. And he took me on his plastic punching uh, journey. We are now living together and punching plastics together. He's very, very passionate about, about this project, very dedicated, very ambitious too. His energy, his passion is what is also pushing the project uh, forward and it's good, we, are, we have a good balance. I am more relaxed and he's more pushing. And I think that's why the, the project is also working well. Before, I was not really an environmental activist, but I, I was living in Europe, in Germany, so Recycling is some, something very obvious. I remember when I came to Ghana first, I was like keeping all my plastic bottles and I didn't know what to, to do about it. And when I met Legacy, um, well, you cannot be with someone who has such a project and, and not help. For me, it was obvious that I have to support and I have to, to be there. He has to continue to keep this energy, to keep this a good vibe he has and I think it will it will go very far and I will I will try to do my best to continue to to support as much as I can. Ghana is is dirty at the moment unfortunately uh, all the beaches I knew 15 years ago where I used to go and have fun like in Dansoman in Labadi all these places are beaches where you wouldn't want to swim right now so and the problem is not so much of a monetary one. It also has to do with education and awareness and um, people checking each other, citizens checking each other. And this we, we, we can impact um, by our actions that we are carrying out already. I mean, we, we will not give up. I don't think we will give up till um, Ghana is clean again. It's not so much of a difficult job to get Ghana clean. It's just people changing their mindset and doing simple things like taking um, baskets to the market like we used to do, rather than taking all this so much single-use plastics. When it rains right now, you go to the beach, you see a lot of single-use plastics floating on the water, endangering marine life and all. Uh, when it gets to the point that we, uh, we get the people to understand the implications of these actions on their health, on their economics, because uh, most of these people um, sustain themselves on fishing activities, so when we let them understand the impact of these small, small, small actions on their, on their environment and what it reciprocates to them, I feel that there will be a, a, a change in the mindset because that is the biggest problem I see right now. I, 
I really enjoy what I'm doing right now. I mean, it is a little, um, it is like building something, trying to change minds. Sometimes you are not able to measure the impact. It is quite different from business where you are able to measure with profit. You, you carry out initiatives, you do things, you go to places, you talk to people. But at the end of the day, the thing is how many of these children have really been impacted by the knowledge you are trying to give or how many people are really going to practice what you are preaching to them. And it is a little difficult to measure, but the indicators, um, well, hopefully we are sure it is doing well due to the feedback we get from all these people who are supporting our course. We, we, we cannot give up. Um, the problem is a big one and we need to really stand strong. Uh, I mean, there are going to be a lot of hurdles. No one said it's going to be easy because you have a, a strong plastic manufacturing base worldwide. Um, it's a thing of business and environment, business versus environment, uh, profits versus the environment. And we choose to start, stand on the side of um, the environment. And I feel if we don't stand for the environment, we'll fall for anything that goes in the way of profit. So no, we will not give up despite more punching. Ha, ha, ha.